We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right, Jared. How are you doing today? You know, I, 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 I planted three trees today. Three. Three, three trees. Doing great, doing great things for the world, Jared. Planting trees. I mean, there are worse things you could be doing for the world than, than planting trees. <laughs> but we won't cover that now. You know what we are going to cover? Our uh, our newest tradition. Hold on. Here we go. That was a good one. I think that was a good one. Uh, I that will was. say I, I I got a little bit wet on that one. <laughs> That's okay. We move forward. All right. What are we talking about today, Jared? Walking taco. Great. Uh, excuse me. Wolf's Ridge is what I'm drinking. Not what you asked, but it's what I answered. You asked one question. I answered with the with a whole other topic. What we are doing today, we, we are officially uh, post camp. We are officially in the I still I have the wrong branding on. Hold on. I'm going to fix this. Kyle, you, job, you know, Jared. you know what we're doing. Why don't you tell the people what we're doing? Sure. Another round of some uh, depth chart prediction here. Um, post spring camp edition. So we'll one more time give our final thoughts about our depth chart prediction from what we've seen from pre-camp news and from the spring game itself. And yeah, some changes, I think, of um, kind of, yeah, some names thrown around here of who potentially be a starter, who will get some uh, playtime experience as a backups here. But yeah, let's let's get right into it then, Jared. All right. Um, the biggest The biggest thing here, I think, is the one of quarterback talk a lot lot about last year who's going to be the quarterback for Ohio State same thing this year Who, who's it going to be is it going to be is it going to be Will Howard is it going to be Devin Brown what's your thoughts Jared I am going to go with Will Howard at the moment I think what Ohio State needs out of a quarterback right now is consistency. And while I think Devin Brown has the ability to maybe be more spectacular than Will Howard, maybe he has a bigger arm than Will Howard. He might be more capable of making big plays than Will Howard. I think what you're getting out of Will Howard is a sense of consistency, a sense of leadership, I suppose. Not to say that by any means to suggest that you know, Devin Brown's not like a leader, but Will Howard's played a lot of football. He's an experienced quarterback, and I think that will be the edge here. I think he is maybe just a, a tad more ready. I think Ohio State needs a game manager. I think they have enough talent mm -hmm. in the skill positions that they just need someone. They just need a point guard. They don't need. They don't need a point guard who shoots. Uh, I think is what it comes down to. They don't need a. They don't need a point guard who shoots. They just need someone who's going to get the ball to the people who do shoot. And I think Ohio State has a ton of people who shoot. Yeah, I agree. I they need someone who can just do what's needed. I honestly like this year. I think Craig Krenzel of an O two. Don't need somebody who can, who can overdo yeah. things. Just just enough to to be productive. I agree. Now I, you, I, I think Will I think Will Howard is that guy too. So I got I got Will Howard as well as my starter, and then Devin Brown, the experience, the other experienced quarterback on the team. Uh, Devin Brown is the as the backup here. Love I love Devin Brown. I would yeah. love nothing more than to see Devin Brown succeed. But I I gotta. I, I got to mention the um, the elephant in the room, and that's and that's just his injury prone history oh, that he's that, had here. It's that elephant. That, 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 that's 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 got to be like the big red flag in my mind when I look at who's going to be the starter and who's the backup. Like, I I, th I think you give the nod to Will Howard, and I think he did just enough to kind of separate himself a little bit more than Devin Brown, but it's still not a as big of a separation as I would like to have seen 
as a um, starting quarterback. I mean, yeah, I mean, it it should be. No, I don't know if there's been a, a a huge amount of separation between the two at this point. I, I still say this is an open competition. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it's done and I'm not saying it's over by any means. Uh, I'm like 60, 40 Will Howard. It's, it's not, it's not even, I'm not calling it, uh, you know, we had to make a choice. We're not doing, I, I have very few. In fact, I would say I have no ors. I have some ands. I would say I have some ands. I don't have any ors on my depth chart. I, I, and even with the ands, I use them sparingly. So I am trying to make a call at every position. And if I use an and or an or, it's it's for good reason. Mm -hmm. And I don't think at quarterback, it's a good idea to go into the season with an and or an or. Agreed. Agreed. All right. The other position, the backfield, the running back here, it's no, Trey speaking. Hundo. Trey, it, Trey, Trey Hundo is my, is the starter, and then uh, and then uh, the transfer coming in, Judkins is the backup. I said I use my ands and my ors sparingly. Well, here's an and, and this is not a this is not an or. This is an and. Okay, okay, okay. Is is Jared bringing back the? Uh, the wing T here, having Trey and um, Judkins in the backfield here. Some of them, I mean, <laughs> I think they're going to get roughly even carries. I don't think that there's a distinct one and a distinct two. That's it. That does leave me an open spot for the third running back where I'm going to put TC Caffey, the current walk on. I, a couple guys have hit the portal. We're officially under 85. You know, especially one of those guys, a running back. I think maybe TC Caffey might be getting a scholarship, Kyle. That's just a prediction. I don't know anything. I don't know. If I'm going with the third, I, I really like what I've seen from uh, from James Peoples. If I were to put yeah. a third running back, I'd, I'd probably put James Peoples. That's fair. TC Caffey. I, I don't agree, but I think that's fair. All right, let's let's cover the the other other positions before we go over the the line here. So let's I I, I think I think tight end here. I think this is easy for us. I think it it's uh Scott as your starting tight end. That's who I have then, as uh, well, yes. And then uh Will uh Kick Merrick. Thank you. <laughs> Um, as your as your backup tight end. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I do think G. Scott Jr. is going to win it, uh, which is mm -hmm. I, I don't believe. And someone you guys can go back and watch our we, we did a we did a depth chart prediction January, maybe early February. And I th think I had kick Merrick starting in that one. I've reversed position on that. I, I, I now have G Scott Jr. Starting. Um, I think he had a very good camp. I I think that there's been a lot of praise about his leadership and whatnot. I, I believe uh, he, he seems to be doing better from a blocking standpoint. If you're looking to have a number one, a, a, a tight end who can do it all. I think, I think G Scott Jr. Is going to be your guy there. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. And the wide receivers here. Yeah. I think. Uh, which wide receiver position you want to start with? <laughs> or do you just want to start naming names? I, do you do you have these backwards? Because I think I think Emeka is your slot, not your X. I, I, have, I, I have Emeka that, as, as the slot. By the way, a lot of people do. I don't think you're alone in that. I, I mean. I think a lot of people have put a mecca at the slot. I, I'm not telling you or anyone who's doing that that they're wrong. I have a mecca at X. Uh, I think, to me, I think that's where he should be. I think he should be playing on the outside. That's my. That's just my opinion on the matter. 
Uh, I know a lot of people are speculating he's going to move back to the slot. I simply don't agree. Um, that's all. Okay. I like him on well, the outside. Gotcha. I mean, Emeka's, Emeka's best at, at the slot there from what we've seen at his time at Ohio State. So I, I think Emeka at slot, uh, JJ at the Z position, I think I think we both agree. JJ yeah. at the Z. Je- I have Jeremy- Jeremiah Smith at Z, uh, starting at Z as a freshman. Feels insane with the depth in the room at wide receiver, yeah. but it is what it is at this point. Like it's, yeah, it just is what it is. But yeah, uh, Jeremiah Smith starting at Z. Do we dis- we both have a Mecca Buka starting. We just don't agree on on where. Yeah. Um, well, so who do you have? Who do you have at X? X. I got Carnell Tate. I have okay. Tate as the X there. He's he's done so much great things during the spring camp here. Yeah. I don't know how you couldn't get him uh, up there as one of the, one of the starters there. Tate Smith, Ibuka, you're starting three in my mind. So I, I have Tate at X and I have him at two at X. Um, I instead have starting Brandon Ennis at the slot. Now, I have Brandon Ennis starting at the slot. However, I think, and I didn't and or or this, because I do think Brandon Ennis will be the number one. I think you will also see a lot of Bryson Rogers, who uh, is a guy who had an amazing camp yep. this year. And, I've, and I had Rogers as my backup for the slot, too. Okay. So we both agree with Bryson Rogers at the backup slot position. Mm-hmm. Um, my backup... I know you have here Carnell Tate, your backup for X. My backup, my mind is uh, is Kojo Antwi. He, he's had he's had a, a a great spring camp as well too. And I have Antwi backing up Jeremiah Smith at the Z. Personally, <laughs> all right. And my my backup to Z is uh, Jaden Ballard. Okay. Um, I adore Jaden Ballard. I want nothing but the best for Jaden Ballard. I wonder if he is too damn good to not be starting somewhere at this point. You could say that with a lot of these receivers. You could say that about a lot of, yeah, you, you absolutely could. You 100% absolutely could. Um, and again, I I say this as a compliment. I want to be very clear. I say this as a compliment. I look at Kion Gray's, Jaden Ballard, Kojo Antwi, those guys especially, and I ask the question, why are you still here? I think any one of those guys could find a lot of starting time if they hit the portal, if not yeah. starting time, playing time, um, yeah. I selfishly, I mean, especially not all of them, <laughs> yeah, especially not all of them, but you know, we need a little bit of depth here, but mm-hmm. selfishly, I want them all to stay, but Jane, especially with Jane, Ball- Jane Ballard, uh, I believe this is his third season. Um, I'm just, yeah, that's a, you know, I, I want him to stay. I want him to stay. I want him to be a part of this team. Yeah. But I wonder if he's just a little too good and a little too old to be where he is on the depth chart, in my opinion. You know, maybe maybe the coaches have him higher on the depth chart than I do. Maybe. All right. The slops, Jared. I, I, th- I think... I mean, a lot of people are talking about the quarterback. The quarterback's going to make or break the team. It's... It's it's the offensive line, just like yeah. last year. The offensive line is going to make or break how well this offense does this year. Got all the talent in the world on the outside in the backfield here, but you got to have the slobs to to do their job here. So left tackle here, no, I mean no question. It's it's Josh Simmons. Josh Simmons is your yeah. left tackle here. Zero question. Zero question at all. Um, 
and then and then I, I might as well just go left to right here. So the Josh Simmons as your starting left tackle, Donovan Jackson as your starting left guard. Now center center, there's a, there's a lot of talk with the the transfer coming in with uh, Seth McLaughlin, McLaughlin. McLaughlin. Thank you. Coming in, uh, coaches try to see if he he does well or if you're going to give the nod to Carson Hinsman here, but we've seen Hinsman uh, playing right guard a lot too. So I think that I think that's what we're going to see. We're going to see Seth at the center, Carson at right guard. I agree. Unless unless something happens in the portal that could reshuffle things, I mm-hmm. think but, but this is this is this is You are right, right, right. We're camp. not Yeah, yeah. We we're we're not yeah. we're not projecting anyone coming in in the portal. We're we're not gonna mm-hmm. try and do that. Also, like who who would Ohio State try and go get in the portal right now? It's a right tackle. That's who they would try and go get in the portal right now. Mm-hmm. Maybe they'd go after a right guard, but almost certainly they'd go after a right tackle. Yeah. And you're in your right tackle right now. If you go look who's in the portal right now, not not, they're not going to get a body. They're not going to go to the portal and get a body. They're going to go get a stud out of the portal. And if a stud doesn't enter the portal, guess what? Yeah. So, so the right tackle then, would have to be Josh Fryer. A hundred percent. That's if again, with the roster that we know exist, these are your starting five. And I feel very good about that. Um, I feel, feel very good com- about, well, I feel confident that this is the starting five. I don't okay. necessarily <laughs> feel wonderful as a fan. that These are the starting five. I, I think that they need they need another I think there's an injection of talent that is needed here. I, I would give my I, I'd give I'd give it one or two of my fingers to bring in a all star all American tackle. And maybe that tackle is a left tackle, and maybe that means Simmons bumps over to right tackle. And then maybe that means Josh Fire bumps into right guard. That you know that could lead to, or maybe the tackle that comes in plays right tackle. I don't know, and that would, and I think I do think if they bring in a tackle, I think Fryer bumps into guard. I, I do think that's what would happen. I do think that you know Josh Fryer, if he if Josh Fryer has an amazing year this year, just a spectacular year this year. And he's had a good camp from what I've hear. He's transformed his body from what I hear. Um, mm-hmm. And he, Josh Fryer, by all rumor and anything else, is going to be a better Josh Fryer this year than we saw last year. Yeah. Let's just, so let's say he has a spectacular year this year. If he then gets to go camp in the NFL in 2025, it's still going to be a guard. He's a guard. I Josh Fryer is a guard in my mind. I think the best thing that could pop that could possibly happen for Josh Fryer is if Ohio State went and got a right tackle or a left tackle that I already said it and allow him to play right guard because if he wants to play in the NFL or even, you know, get on an NFL roster, it will be at guard. That's all. I just Ohio State needs another player. Ohio State needs an additional starter out of the portal for the offensive line. Yeah, and I and I like the what I'm seeing the development in some of the positions as as far as a backup here. <sighs> uh, like, I I don't. Like, I, I, I like I like Tigra. I like Tigra a lot, and I and I think he's had a pretty good. Uh, spring camp here we've seen him play right guard we've seen him play at right tackle here so i think you're going to see taker as kind of that next guy in if if something were to happen to 
or something were to happen at the guard or right tackle position, I think Tegra would be that next person to come in. I'm not. I think you're you're higher, maybe that on okay, Tegra right. than I am at this point in time. Um, I really wanted, really wanted Tegra or Luke Montgomery to really take over one of the spots this year mm-hmm. and it hasn't happened. Nope. And we have to start looking to see if Ohio state is developing their offensive linemen well enough. If neither Tegra nor, and these are two highly rated recruits, Tegra Chabola and Luke Montgomery, two very highly rated recruits. If these guys aren't ready yet, we need to seriously start looking at is the Ohio State coaching staff developing the offensive linemen well enough? Because yeah. that's, yeah, we d- need to have a serious look at the coaching staff and everything else involved with getting the young offensive linemen ready, which doesn't appear to be happening. And another thing I think we need to take a close look at is, is an ad break and uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com where you can skip these ad breaks that get injected into these, into these podcasts. And it's, it's not a serious matter. You can just go to patreon.thesloopcast.com pay $3 a month. And if you don't want to pay a a monthly thing, you know, you can do 12 months right up front and only pay for 11 of them. And it's, it's not that serious. And I really think that a lot of Ohio state fans could pull that off. And I really think that, um, I, I, I'm I'm not sure where I'm going with this bit anymore about keeping the serious tone through the ad break. Here's the ad break now. All right, we're back from the ad break and or awkward silence, depending upon where you're watching this and or listening to it. I have Tegra as the backup tackle um, with the offensive line, as Kyle pointed out, and we'll have this conversation at other positions as well. For the most part, we're going to slot in five new names, but that's not how it works. Typically, there's like a backup guard and a backup tackle. And specific, you know, it's but you know we're gonna, we're going to slot in five names, but there's typically like a backup interior guy and a backup tackle, and they'll figure out left and right and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. And I think one of the things you'd have to keep an eye out, for example, if Seth McLaughlin were to get hurt, Hinsman is still your backup center. Correct. Yes. So, you know, Hinsman would sh- would shuffle over to center and, you know, you'd have someone. I'm going to say Enoch Famahi. Um, that's who I'm like going to put in at right guard. Um, yeah, I like would, him. I, would I then I didn't, bump into. I didn't have him on, the, on my list there, uh, but I, I actually had Montgomery as the backup for the right guard. We've seen he's actually was playing at right guard a lot during the spring camp there. So I, I kind not, of plugged him there. But not for well. For now. But but he wasn't playing it well, if we're being honest. When when Luke Montgomery was a high schooler during the early part of his career, uh, recruitment, there was a lot of talk. Is he a is he a tight end? Is he a tackle? Is he a tackle? Is he a tight end? Um and it, it's one thing to move a tight end into tackle. It's another thing to move a tight end into guard. Um, I don't think the I don't think the Luke Montgomery at guard experiment went well. So I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I have Luke Montgomery as the backup left tackle. I think if the decision's been made that Josh Fryer is the left tackle, or excuse me, the right tackle, if the decision's been made that Luke, uh, gosh, darn, Jared, back it up. Try it again. If the decision's been made, Josh Fryer is the right tackle. 
Well, then that means Ohio State needs to start getting someone ready to be the backup left tackle. If Luke Montgomery is no longer in contention to win the right tackle spot, then you need to get him ready to play left, left tackle. Just in case. Who do you have backup so, left tackle? Yeah, I I had Tegra <laughs> as the backup left left tackle as well. Oh, like, so like who'd you, you have a back? Yeah, uh, who'd you have a backup right ta- tackle? Tegra, <laughs> the, the backup oh. tackle is Tegra. <laughs> okay, that's fair. That's fair. The backup left the backup left guard I had was was uh, Austin. I had Austin, Austin as Saraveld my, as my backup left guard. Uh, and then also who so, I have at backup left or, guard or or Enoch as well but i think enoch is going to be your first guard in yeah in my opinion um left tackle you can all you could always make the case that you need to have your left tackle trained to be left tackle and your right tackle trained to be right tackle but guard i feel feel like guard is much more interchangeable so yeah. it, it makes a lot of sense that it's just your, you know, your third guard is Enoch and that's it. Yep. Yep. So looking at this list here, Jared, looking at your, your starters, backups, how confident do you feel about this offense here? Confident enough. Um, Is it confident enough to, to win the big 10 confident yes. enough to, to to win a playoff game, yes. To win the national championship game, maybe. I would feel a lot better if they injected some talent into the offensive line somewhere. If if they brought in a bona fide, no nonsense, no questions asked starter in the for the offensive line. Honestly, at any position, except center, I feel like we're okay at center. We are, we already did that. I mean, I, I'd love to bring in a dominant right guard too, if that's who you can get, bring them in. But I just, I just want to, I want to make some calls, or rather, use some back channels and make some things happen through the back channels and see who you can entice to enter the to enter the portal. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying. It just like, if you want to beat this, this offense right here can win the big 10, but can it beat Texas? Can it beat Georgia? I don't know. Right, let's, Let's move on to the defensive side here. All right. I just, just before we even start here, I'm way more confident over here. <laughs> yes. Way, way more confident on the defensive side here. Where do you want to start? Now, it should be noted before we I'm, even get started. Tal and I developed two totally different defenses here. Yeah. Honestly, let's start with the secondary because <laughs> I feel secondary is going to be the same. What we have here. That's totally fair. So let, let, let's just let's just kick off with the corners. Uh Burke and Igbenosen as your starting corners. Absolutely. And the backups and the backs up is uh Jermaine Matthews and Calvin Simpson Hunt. Um Very- yes. I for for the sake of this depth chart yes i'll say this if either of these guys get hurt we all know that jordan hancock is the starting nickel but if either of these guys get hurt especially if it's for like an entire game and not just a few plays i think hancock takes over one of the outside corner spots right i yeah. that that's just how i see things um, so f- for the sake of the depth chart, I agree, Kyle, um, Simpson hunt, I have as the backup CB two, 
And I have Jermaine Matthews as the backup CB1. But even when even within this scenario, I think if Igbenosin goes down, it's Matthews that jumps in. I just I just I just have Jermaine Matthews just a sliver above Calvin Simpson hunt at this point. Okay. Um, and, back but up, again, I think up. if it's a long-term injury, it's Hancock that takes over one of the outside corner spots. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that as well. Lorenzo Styles as your backup nickel. No. Hmm. I have Aaron Scott. I know Aaron Scott. I know, Aaron, I know Aaron Scott's a, is that Fred? Is that um shiny new freshman here? But I, I got I got a I got a feel that that Lorenzo Styles is the backup for the nickel. Okay, um, we'll see. Uh, I'll just say uh, I've heard stuff that I'm not going to repeat on the podcast in regards to Styles. That's that's it. Um, All we'll right. see. All right, and the safeties, it's it's Downs and Ransom. Downs as your as your free safety and Ransom as your as your strong safety. Uh, uh of course, of course, of course. It's you know, we didn't get to see Ransom a lot this camp due to some injuries. No big deal. He'll be ready for fall. Caleb Downs mm-hmm. is Caleb Downs. You have Caleb Downs it, as the field safety. You have ransom as the strong safety or up safety and and feel and the field safety is more your like your deep safety your free safety um yeah absolutely yeah. those are those are your two starting mm-hmm. true safeties the the the, the yep, i guess in this system we call the nickel back a safety you know, cover cover safety but whatever yeah um and i and i have as um for Caleb's uh, backup here, I have Malik Hartford. Yep. No, he was he was out of spring camp, but when he's back and healthy, he, he's he's the backup for for Caleb Downs. Yeah, and I think Jaden Bonsu is your backup strong safety. Mm. Oh, I know Bonsu. I know Bonsu has had a really good uh, has had a really not good, who you have. No, I had Jihad Carter. Mm hmm. Um, well, we'll talk about Jihad Carter after the podcast, too, I think. OK, OK. <laughs> but as of right now, as of right now, though, Jared, I'm not speculating, mm-hmm. not speculating anything. This no, is no, of course post, not. This is post. Spring camp as of what the team yeah. is right now. OK. All right. What do you got for your for your. For your front. uh Six. Yeah, I know. It's such <laughs> it, you just want to say front seven. It's just yeah. so instinctual to say front seven, but it is a front six yeah. uh, defense. Let's start with the defensive ends. Um, I have at one defensive end, JT Tui Molalau. That's yep. obvious. Yep. And at the other one, I have starting Jack Sawyer. That agreed once again is is obvious. Yes. Now, where things th- start to get a little bit tricky. Well, I, I think you can put in nose tackle is, is Hamilton. But you have a 3-3. Three, three. This is this is the big thing. I do, I, yes. I put in a 4-2. Uh-huh, I put did. in a 4-2-5. So if you're looking at the graphic, if you're watching on, on the, the YouTubes, I have a, I have a 4-2. Kyle went 3-3. Three, three. Is Hamilton now? I have, I have Hamilton at nose tackle. But if I were doing a three-three, Kyle, I think I'd have Ty Leak at nose tackle. Now I have Ty Leak at the three-tech defensive uh, tackle. But to me, if I were you with a three three, I'd have I think I'd have Ty Leak starting in nose. How do you have it how do you have it laid out? I have Sawyer, Hamilton, and Jate and uh Tui Malau as my as my three in the front. 
I, I, I don't know. I could not start Tyleek Williams. Here, here's the thing. If I'm doing a three, three, it's a, it's a heavy dose with Hamilton and, and Tyleek at the nose tackle, keeping them fresh. If I'm doing a three, three, I'm heavily tempted to move Ty Leak out the defensive end and make Jack Sawyer a rush end linebacker, a standing linebacker. I you you, you do you do however you want. Yeah, to yeah, do no, it, no. Jared. I'm just I know it's just like I'm having fun here. I'm speculating a bit, right? That's what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Yep. I I feel like I'd be tempted to move Jack Sawyer to linebacker in a three three. I. I almost did that. I I, yeah. almost, I almost did that, but uh, so for linebackers, so for linebackers, do you want to do? Uh, uh, should we do backup defensive line? Oh, y- y- first? Y- the backups. Yeah. So Kenyatta Jackson, I have backing up. Um, I, I guess it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Kenyatta Jackson and Caden. St- uh, King Curry as your backup defensive ends. Uh, yes, I, I, I do specifically. And I think I, I do think it matters. Um, I think your, your Jack Sawyer is more your weak side defensive end, a little bit smaller, a little bit faster. Whereas JT two and is a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, um, at your strong side defensive end. So I and I do have Caden Curry backing up Jack Sawyer at the weak side defensive end and at the strong side defensive end. I actually have two players. Um, I have. This I I do have Kenyatta Jackson like you, but I'm missing. There he is. I have Mitchell Melton as well. So I I used, I used one of my, I used one of my ands to put Mitchell Melton uh, and Kenyatta Jackson as backup strong side defensive ends. Defensive tackle. Well, actually I'll I'll, I'll just say notes tackle. I have a hero, hero Kanye. I I really, really like what I've seen from hero during the, during spring camp here, I think I think he emerged as a as a player that will will see the field this year. He'll, he'll, yeah. he'll, have, he'll have some good, uh, some significant uh, playing time this year. Hundred percent agree. I have him as my backup nose in my four three mm-hmm. as well. And my backup, well, so my my in my my defense, I had three three. I had Hamilton as my. Really, Hamilton slash Williams as my nose tackle, and then I had Malone and Kanye as my backups. I actually have Caden McDonald backing up Ty Leak at the three tech defensive tackle. Okay. Yeah, another another name that uh, uh another name that's uh, heard around for spring camp too. McDonald's had a really good spring camp as well. Yeah, so that's your starting defensive line, at least if you're doing four down. Uh, mm-hmm. Sawyer, Tyleek, Hamilton, JT, backed up by Caden Curry, Caden McDonald, mm-hmm. Hero, and some sort of mixture of Kenyatta Jackson and Mitchell Melton. Yep, yep. That's a hell of a defensive line. The second string. <laughs> That's a better defensive. I think that's a better defensive line. The back of the second string is a better defensive line than I think you're going to find in all but one or two Big Ten teams this year. Yeah. All right. Linebackers. Um, We'll get to the linebackers after we take a quick ad break here. So we'll take a quick ad break and we will we'll finish up the defensive side with the linebackers. That was, that was well done, Kyle. Uh, linebackers, as Kyle as Kyle said. Who who do you have? Now, you have three linebackers. I got three. I got three. So I will just say my 
my mic. My mic's Cody Simon. I got Cody yeah. Simon as my mic. And the weak side, well, I I guess it I guess it's called so Will. Will Will so you, side, weak side. You um, you would have Sam's you side. would have a Sam as well. Yeah. So my will would be CJ Hicks and my my Sam would be Sony Styles. Interesting. Um, I have CJ Hicks and Cody Simon as another and at the Mike linebacker. I think it's situational. I think you have CJ Hicks in yeah. in more passing situations. Cody Simon's going to be in for more run based situations. It also might depend upon the team you're playing if they're a a pass happy or a run happy team. And I have Sonny Styles starting at will. Mm -hmm. And the backups here, a lot of young. It's, I think it's a very young uh, for backups here. I wouldn't feel as comfortable if something were to happen with the starters that you would have to bring in. <laughs> really? Bring in. Bring well, in you, you're, young, you, 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 you have, you have to deal with six linebackers. I only have to deal with. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know. Well, five because so I, I did a double starter. Yeah. So I had um, I had Stover backing up Hicks, uh, Gabe Powers, um, back up in the Mike position, and then Court Williams uh, for the Sam. But honestly, honestly, if something happened to Sony Styles, I think you would see CJ Hicks going over to the Sam position i think if something happens to sunny styles the three three might not be a three three yeah, anymore it, it, that is fair if something were happened to sunny styles we would be going to a four two then <laughs> yeah uh, it, yeah it's because for what it's worth i don't think this is either or i've said i've said this on the podcast a few times at this point to me there's a core 10 guys and who that 11th person is kind of determines if you're in the 3-3 three, three or the 4-2. Because yeah. to me, it's, do you want CJ Hicks out there or do you want Ty Hamilton out there? In my opinion. Who do you want that 11th guy to be? Because I'm enough. not taking Ty Leak off the uh, yeah, well, I mean, I mean, everyone they're going to rotate players. Don't get me wrong, but if we're talking about starters, if we're talking game on the line, Ty Leak, Jack Sawyer, JTT, Denzel Burke, Davis Enigmanosen, Jordan Hancock, Cody Simon, Sonny Styles, uh, Lathan Ransom, and Caleb Downs. Those are my 10 guys. That is okay. the core of this defense. Who do you have backing up Sony Styles? I also have Court Williams. Okay. <laughs> All right. And for what it's worth, like I love I love the young talent in the linebacker room. Garrett Stover, Peyton Pierce, Nigel Glover is a guy who I don't think people talk about enough. Uh Averill Reese had a really good camp. I I think that there is some good young talent in the, you know, we, we didn't realize how good Malik Harford was until we had to have him out there. We didn't realize how good Jermaine Matthews was until we had to have him out there. I think in a pinch, if Ohio state had to trot out one of the linebackers, you're not currently you know, like if, if the top five linebackers on this team are, you know, I think the top three linebackers, Sonny Styles, Cody Simon, CJ Hicks. Not in that order, just those are your three top linebackers on this team. I don't think mm -hmm. anyone's going to dispute that. I think your second tier linebackers on this team are Gabe Powers and Court Williams. I don't think anyone's going to dispute that. But the young talent, and I'm not, I'm not even going to call them the third tier because it feels disrespectful. They're not the third tier, they're just young. Avril Reese, Nigel Glover, Peyton Pierce, Garrett Stover. One of those guys could fill in and play. Whoever the best one of those guys is. I have a feeling it's Avril Reese, but whoever one of the best 
one of those guys is, if if he had to play, I think he'd be ready. And also, like, keep in mind all the talent around that guy. <laughs> it helps. It helps a lot to have all that talent around you. All right, Kyle. All right, uh, special teams. Are, oh, I, I didn't do special teams. <laughs> Which Aussie punter, Kyle? The one who's currently in camp or the one that's not currently in camp? I mean, I got to do the one that was in camp. I mean, we're doing a post-spring, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're literally not representing, and I don't, I don't know. I don't know who would be showing up in the fall who would make it into a two deep quite frankly um mm -hmm. you could it's just all right hold on let's let's take a look let's take a look real quick oh i opened up the can of worms here <laughs> yeah you did so if we look at the 2024 class um Mylon Graham is an absolute stud, but the wide receiver room is so deep right now. It's just hard to see it. Um, you have two tight ends coming in. I don't see them cracking the, 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 the two deep. I think I, I've, you know, optimistic about them, but I don't see it happening. I don't think Gabe Van Sickle is going to crack the two deep. Um, I don't think Dominic Kirks is going to crack the two deep. I don't think Leroy Roker is going to crack the two deep. So of the freshmen, not currently in spring. Punter Nick McClartley, the giant Aussie punter. It might be your only, your only real Maybe. option. Maybe. But the, it, the, but the most important question the most important question, Jared. Will it happen this year? Punt return? Will it, will it happen this year? Talking about a punt return? Year? Is that what you're talking about? Either. <laughs> well, it's not going to be return, kick, kick, it's return. Not be kick return. It's not going to be kick return. I mean, everybody's kicking it out of the end zone. So, so yes, punt return. Will it happen? And also, I think we're going to get a lot more punts punted at us than we're going to get kicks kicked at us this year, too. So just from that standpoint, that feels more likely as well. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, down did it last year. Sure. Caleb down to hit it last year. Is Caleb downs going to be the one doing it this year? I don't think we have an answer to that. Nope. We don't. All right. Anything else, Jared, anything else from um, that we've discussed about the, about the lineup here, I'm still looking at the offensive line. Still a big, I want to say red flag, but it's definitely a. It's the weakest spot concern. on the team right now. It's a now. concern. It's yeah. the weakest spot on the team right now. That's that's just a fact. Will, will Howard will Howard will get it done at the and at if the he quarterback does, position, but and if he doesn't, Devin Brown will. And again, like, I don't think we need a ton from the quarterback this year. I just don't feel like we need a ton out of the quarterback. But yeah, the court, that, that, uh, that offensive line. Yeah. We were, we were hoping, we were hoping for something. We, we, we got a center. Great. We, we got, we got a center, but hey, we got we, a week. We really, we really wanted that tackle. We really wanted a tackle from somewhere. And Ohio State, like, they explored it. They're, they're not going to get just a body at the tackle position. They have bodies. If they're going to go get someone out of the portal at the tackle position, it's going to be an absolute no questions asked starter. They kicked the tires on a couple guys who went in the portal after the season. They passed on all of them. You know, they, they, they tried to get Caden Proctor. But Caden Proctor was just, he, he went in the portal knowing he was going to Iowa 
And then he got back into the portal knowing he was going to Bama. I, it may, maybe Ohio State dodged a bullet there. I, I don't know what's happening with Caden Proctor. Um, there was another tackle who they went after who I think ended up just going back to their team. I forget. Um, but there was like two guys who they pursued. One of them was never actually available. The other one ended up going back to their team. And from, from the time of recording this, or at least from the last time I checked, checked the portal, which was a couple hours ago on Sunday. So as of somewhat late on Sunday, none of the tackles, there's a couple guards. None of the tackles currently in the portal are that guy for Ohio State. None of them. Yep. Yep. There's a couple good guards. There's a couple good guards who you could bring in and plug in at right guard. I don't know how necessary that is, to be honest with you. Um, because in modern college football, it's just like if you go out and you pay a right guard a ton of money to come to Ohio State, you go to your you go to your you go to the next booster on the list and be like, hey man, we really need this right guard. Can maybe maybe plop some money down, help us out, give to 1870. Help help us out. We'll we'll get this figured out. We're gonna win a national championship this year. And the guy goes, Yeah, okay, here, here you go. Here's here's a million bucks for a right guard. The problem becomes if then a tackle hits the portal, you call that same booster back and he's like, dude, I just gave you a million dollars. You're the next booster on the list and maybe you get the money. Maybe you don't because let's be honest. They already used up a ton of those favors getting Caleb downs, mm -hmm. getting a bunch of the guys who they brought in. And retaining people don't talk about that enough. It was making sure Jeremiah Smith came in. It was making sure that the Mecca Buka stayed making sure that a bunch of the players who stayed stayed is also where a lot of that money went. So the question is, if you go out and you get a right guard and you ask a favor from a booster to get a right guard, Are, do you, are you sure there's going to be money left over for when you do, need to go get a right tackle who hits? You mean NIL isn't truly NIL? Shockingly, that is the case. Yes. We should have enough boosters to buy players. Well, like I said, Chop, is that the quiet part? It's not even quiet anymore. We're, we're, no, we're, we're not even... We're not even pretending anymore that NIL isn't being run at the directive of the schools. No one's even pretending anymore. They so, just need to bring that in-house and stop pretending. I know I know it's been a couple of days because uh, he put himself in the transfer portal took himself out back in the transfer portal. I know he's an interior lineman. But what about the um what about Derek Graham? Out seems of like Texas A&M there. Seems like unionized school employees are on the horizon. I agree. I I think I think it's a matter of time. I agree. Uh yeah, I, again, I, I think he's instantly Ohio State's starting right guard. Uh, again, what I just said about the boosters. You, you, There's only so many boosters who you can call, who you haven't called already. Again, look at the trans, look at Quinshawn Judkins. Look at Caleb Downs, Will Howard. Seth McLaughlin, look at the high profile guys who have already transferred in. And then, of course, don't forget 
the money that was paid to Trey Henderson to keep him here, the money that was paid to Mecca Buka to keep him here, all the guys who we expected to go to the NFL who didn't go to the NFL, they also got that transfer money. They got that get the guy out of the portal and bring him here, excuse me, and bring him here yeah. money. They don't think that just because they were already here that they didn't also get that money because I promise you they did. It's not just the high profile guys they brought in. It's the high profile guys who they convinced to stay. A lot, a lot of booster money has already been spent. A lot of booster money has already been spent. And, you know, part of the job of the people running the show over at the Woody, whether it be Ryan Day or who whoever's dealing <laughs> with all the boosters, some, you know, athletic directors and whatnot. Yep. They hopefully have an idea of how many favors they have left to ask for this season, because I'm sure they've already called in a ton. Mm -hmm. This is a very expensive football team that Ohio State currently very, has. Very. I'll trade Howard to get Felix. Okapar. No, I would not. What would you, are you dumb? I'm sorry. That's, this is a football school. I hate to break it to you. Yep. All right, Jerry. Any less, any less comments here? Anything? I'll, I'll, pro I'll prove it to you. This is we... this is a football school. I'll prove it to you. We didn't keep Luke Fickle because that's what the basketball school just did. Excuse me, the basketball team. You know what I meant? <laughs> yeah. The basketball anything team else, just kept Luke Fickle. No. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, well, actually, big news here. Uh, the NCAA approves that helmet communication. Oh, uh, that one. Yeah. Big, big changes. Big, big changes. Helmet communication is in. Also in, in. Although out. But out is the one year transfer rule. Yes. In just just uh, unlimited transfers. Everyone gets a transfer all the time. No more grad school loopholes. So no so more one time transfers. That, and um, the two minute warning is in. Yes, chop. Also, two minute warning is in. Approved for both in helmet communication on the field and a two minute warning at the end of each half for college football effective this season. Yep. Communications in for the in-helmet and human communications will be closed with 15 seconds remaining on the play clock or when the, or on when the, the what ball now, Kyle? is on the play clock or okay. when the ball is snapped, whichever comes first on a given play. Is there a defensive player also getting a helmet cam or a helmet? Not cam. A helmet mic, a helmet speaker. I would assume so. Because a long time in the NFL, the quarterbacks had one, but no one on the defense did. And then, then eventually they gave one, you know, the defense got to have one. I would assume so. I would assume so. I mean, I don't see anything on the defense side, but I would, I would assume it would be defense too. So you don't think third loss to Michigan got the booster thirsty to pay handsomely? Yes. Of, yes, it absolutely did. That's... That's why all of this is happening. Yep. I don't know if the booster favors would be denied this year. My point is, and we still can't get a tackle. There's not a tackle to get. Yeah, that, that's that's a problem. There, there weren't that many. Go look like, at who's in the portal. Go, go to on three. Look at their portal tracker. Sort by offensive tackle. There's no one out there. I'm saying you have to know who's out. Uh, you have to know how many favors you have left from the boosters because you've already called in a ton of them. It's not that the boosters aren't thirsty. It's that we've already, 
well, we wouldn't be asking them for water if they're thirsty. Point. We've gone to that well. If that analogy still doesn't work, who cares? We've already gone to that well, and maybe that maybe there's still tons of water left in that well. I don't know. I'm just saying. If you only got one more favor to ask, don't use it on a right guard. Maybe use it on a right tackle. But if there's not going to be a right tackle out there, or if you have, if you got yep. the favors, maybe do both. I don't know. Yep. All right. I think that's it. I think we'll go and end it right there, Jared. Yep, that's it. That's the end of the, end of the episode. Um, tonight's ending music uh, brought uh, brought to you by a Columbus based. I don't know if country is the right right word or folk is the right word. I'm not sure even how he self identifies, but Arlo McKinley is his name. Um, the name of this song is Place to Sleep. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is Arlo McKinley. <laughs>